Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May-June 2023, Paper 4, Variant 1. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of A2 Physics and also you can have better understanding of these questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. In today's lesson, we are talking about May-June 2023, Paper 4, Variant 1. Total time for this exam is 2 hours and you need to answer all questions on this paper. And total mark for this paper is 100. On second page of your exam paper, you can find values of some important constants and if you need value of any constant in your exam for calculations, you can come to this page and you can find values of constants. And also you can find some basic formulae. These are formulae from AS Physics. Maybe you will need some of them for some basic calculations for A2 Physics as well. So if you need, you can come to this page and you can find some basic formulae. On next page, formulae for A2 Physics are given to you. If you have forgotten any formula and you want to double check, you can come to this page and you can double check. So these are some basic formulae from A2 Physics, but these are not all the formulae you need for A2 Physics. Question one, part A says define gravitational field and gravitational field means G. This is simply equal to gravitational force per unit mass. So simply we can write down this is gravitational force better. You can say gravitational force per unit mass gravitational force per unit mass if you write on force per unit mass still you will get mark this question has only one mark and this is b mark mean this has to be in your answer for the second part we need to define electric field and electric field is defined also in a very similar way as we have defined gravitational field electric field simply is equal to electrical force per unit positive charge so this is F per unit positive charge. Positive charge is very important because we use this convention to define the electric field or to define direction of electric field use unit positive charge. So you have to write down per unit positive charge. So this is how direction of electric field is defined. We can also imagine in this case, let's say we have this electric field. So this one is the electric field. So this is electric field. So in this case, we are drawing these lines pointing downwards. So this means this side is positive. This is positive. This is positive. So you are negative, negative and negative. And if we place a positive charge inside this field, we can find out direction of the field. I mean this positive charge will experience force downward. So that's the reason these arrows, they are pointing downwards because direction of electric field is defined by unit positive charge. So the unit positive charge is very important. You have to mention this one in your answer. So how we can define electric field? So simply you can say electric field is electrical force per unit positive charge per unit positive charge. So this is how you need to define electric field for A2 physics per unit positive charge. And this question has one mark and this is B mark. Mean this one has to be in the answer. Third part says state one similarity and one difference between the gravitational potential due to a point mass and electric potential due to a point charge. First of all, let's try to understand what is gravitational potential. Gravitational potential is equal to negative capital G capital M divided by R. So M is the mass and R is the distance from the point mass. From here we can see that potential is inversely proportional to distance from the point mass. And also we need to understand at infinity potential is defined as zero. So at infinity potential is equal to zero or simply you can say at infinite distance from the point mass potential is equal to zero. Now let's try to understand electrical potential. Electrical potential is equal to K capital Q divided by R. If this Q is positive, so the potential will be positive, meaning the potential due to positive charges is positive and potential 
due to negative charges so here we have negative charge this is divided by r so potential due to negative charges is negative so very important point this is the difference between gravitational potential and electric potential from here we can also see that v is inversely proportional to the distance from the point charge so v is inversely proportional and gravitational potential is also inversely proportional to distance from the point mass at infinity electric potential is also defined as zero at infinity we can say potential is equal to zero so these are the points you need to understand to answer this question but for this question you have to write on one similarity and one difference so we can see at infinity both of them they are zero so this is one similar point so this is also zero both of them they are inversely proportional to distance so this is also similarity but gravitational potential is always negative because gravity is attractive force but electric potential it can be positive it can be negative depending on sign of the charge now let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer so in your answer you have to mention these points so the first point if you write down inversely proportional to distance from the point mass or it can be the distance from the point charge if you are talking about electrical potential so if you write on this one point you will get one b mark you can write on this point or you can write on this one zero at infinite distance you will get one mark if you have written gravitational potential is always negative and electric potential can be positive or negative you will also get one mark but you have to write on these two points it can be positive or negative depending on sign of charge so you need to understand why it can when it can be positive when it can be negative depending on sign of charge so we can write on depending on sign of charge so if you write on these points you will get two marks part b says an isolated uniform conducting sphere has mass capital m and charge capital q the gravitational field at the surface of the sphere is small g and electric field at the surface of the sphere is capital E so we can imagine we have one small sphere then the distance from the center of the sphere to the surface is capital R and value of G at the surface is given that is equal to small g this one has to be equal to G capital M divided by R square and value of E at the surface means capital E this one has to be equal to K capital Q means the Q at the surface of the sphere divided by distance from the center of sphere now the question is that how we can use these two equation to get this one if you look at this given equation you can see we have here g over e and we need to show that m over q is equal to alpha times g over e so it simply means that i will divide this g by this because i can see in the equation g divided by e so first of all i will write down here g divided by e and g is equal to g capital m divided by r square e is divided so here we will have r square divided by k times q from here r square we can cancel with r square so simply we left with g capital m divided by k times q but we need to show that m over q is equal to alpha times g over e so we can rearrange this one we can write down g over e this one is equal to g over k and here we have this is m over q so if we rearrange we can write down m over q this one has to be equal to k times small g divided by capital g capital e but for k we need to understand k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught so this is k so we can plug in here so g divided by 1 over 4 pi so it means we will have here 4 pi epsilon naught capital g and we will have capital e now if we rearrange this one we can write on here so this part this is a constant so this is constant and this constant we can replace with alpha so here we have g divided by capital 
E. So this is what we need to prove. Means M over Q. This is equal to alpha times G over E. So this is what we need to prove. This one. And alpha here, we can write on alpha. Alpha is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times capital G. So this one is alpha. So this is value of alpha. For the second part, we need to show that numerical value of alpha is equal to this. And alpha, we have already, we derived the expression for alpha. Alpha is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times capital G. Now, simply we need to plug in value. So, we can write on 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is equal to 8.85 times 10 to minus 12 and value of g is 6.67 times 10 to minus 11. Now simply you need to use calculator and you will be able to get 1.35 1.35 times 10 to 20 kg square per column square. So this is our final answer. If you have got this right answer, you will get one mark. This question has only one mark. And this is answer mark. Part C says, assume that the Earth is a uniform conducting sphere of mass 5.98 times 10 to 24 kgs. The surface of the Earth carries a charge of negative 4.80 times 10 to 5 coulombs that is evenly distributed. Use the information in B to determine the electric field at the surface of the planet. Give a unit with your answer. In the last part, we have already discussed that m over q this is equal to alpha times g over capital e and if we cross multiply we can write down m times e this will be equal to alpha times capital q times small g and from here we can write down e this is equal to alpha times q times G divided by capital M. Now simply we need to plug in values. Alpha in the last part we have discussed alpha was equal to 1.35 times 10 to 20 and value of Q is given to us here. So this is 4.80 times 10 to 5. We are only interested with magnitude so no need to add this negative sign here times value of g, g is equal to 9.81 now simply we need to divide this one by capital m capital m is given to us that is equal to 5.98 times 10 to 24 and if we solve this one our answer should be equal to 106 up to 3 sf newtons per coulomb because electric field this is equal to force per unit positive charge. So the unit of electric field is newtons per coulomb. And this question has two marks. The one mark you will get if you have plug in these values. You will get one C mark and you will get the answer mark if you have got the right answer. So this question has two marks. For the second part, we need to state how the direction of the electric field at the surface of the earth compares with direction of the gravitational field. So first of all, we can imagine this is our planet. So this is our planet. And direction of the gravitational field is pointing towards the planet. So this is pointing towards the planet. So this is the gravitational field. So we are simply talking about M. Gravity is attractive force. Now we need to also define direction of electric field. So now we can imagine our planet. It has a negative charge Q. So this is negative charge Q. So direction of electric field also has to be towards this charge. Negatively charged sphere. So direction has to be towards. So it means if our planet is negatively charged, direction of electric field and direction of gravitational field they are the same so you can simply write on here same direction because charge is negative if charge was positive directions will be opposite as charge is negative so gravitational field and electric field they have the same direction so simply we can say same direction
same direction so the answer for this question is simply you need to write in the same direction and this question has one mark so this is b mark that's all for today's lesson i hope this video was helpful and i'll be uploading remaining questions very soon see you in next video